Hey, remember the discriminant? That thing that your high school algebra teacher sells you as the best thing ever invented? Ooh, b squared minus 4ac. It can tell us how many solutions a quadratic equation has. It can tell us what kind of solutions a quadratic equation has. Isn't that neat? Well, sure, it's neat. You can do a lot with the discriminant in high school algebra. You learn it, b squared minus 4ac. You use it a few times, but then you memorize the quadratic formula. You use it about 10,000 times to solve quadratic equations, and you move on with your life. But there's so much more to discriminants, that's right, plural, than just b squared minus 4ac. In this video, we'll take a look at what the discriminant can do for us in a more general setting. So what are discriminants, plural, in general? Second, can they tell us the same kind of things about higher order polynomials that b squared minus 4ac tells us for quadratics? Of course, that's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes. And finally, why do I, as your abstract algebra professor, think that discriminants are pretty much the best thing ever invented? So step one, what are discriminants in more generality, not just for quadratics and not just b squared minus 4ac? Second. What can discriminants tell us about the number and the nature of roots for a polynomial equation? And finally, why do I think that discriminants are pretty much the best things ever? So going back to high school algebra, you learn the quadratic formula. And then your high school algebra teacher tells you b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant. Well, and your teacher has a good reason for liking that quantity, because it completely classifies quadratic polynomials. After all, if b squared minus 4ac is positive, then that quadratic has two real and distinct roots. If it's 0, then there's one repeated real root. And if it's negative, then there are two roots that are not real and come in a conjugate pair. So that's awesome. But as we'll see, your high school algebra teacher has lied to you, not just about the fact that discriminants exist for more than just quadratics, but also we're going to come up with a definition of discriminant that makes b squared minus 4ac not even the end of the story for quadratics. So here's our definition. The discriminant of any polynomial, whether its coefficients are in the integers or the rationals or the reals or any commutative integral domain, we think of the discriminant as the product of the differences of the roots of that polynomial. In other words, if we know the roots of p, then by subtracting them pairwise, and then multiplying those differences together, we get the quantity that we will call the discriminant of p. Roughly speaking, it measures in an aggregate sense how far spaced apart the roots of p are. Because if the roots are further apart, then their differences are larger complex numbers in magnitude. And when we multiply them together, the discriminant gets bigger. So big discriminants mean spaced apart roots. Small discriminants mean roots that are very close together. As an example, Here's the cubic polynomial t cubed minus 8 and its roots. One of them is the real cubed root of 8, namely positive 2. But the other two roots of this cubic are not real. We can find them by factoring t cubed minus 8 using the difference of cubes technique, and then solving t squared plus 4t plus 4 equals 0. Those roots, negative 1 plus minus radical negative 3, are arranged in the complex plane as shown here. So in fact, the roots of this cubic are spaced at the vertices of an equilateral triangle centered at the origin in the complex plane. That's kind of cool. But what's the discriminant of t cubed minus 8? It's what we get by subtracting these roots pairwise. And when you subtract numbers in the complex plane, what you're really getting are these vectors that point from one to the other. So we can subtract those pairwise and then multiply them all together. And once we do all of that, the discriminant of this cubic is 24 square root of negative 3. So it's not a great number. It's not even a rational number, but somehow it's almost rational in a sense that we'll come to appreciate over the course of this video. So what about b squared minus 4ac? What about that lie that your high school teacher told you? Let's look at a quadratic, t squared minus 4t plus 1. And your high school algebra teacher would tell you that its discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, which, plugging in the coefficients, gives us the number 12. Great. But under our new definition, what would the discriminant of this quadratic be? Well, it looks like we would have to know the roots to find it. And the roots are 2 plus minus radical 3. Subtracting those and then multiplying, well, there's no multiplying to do here because there's only one pair of roots, gives us the discriminant 2 square root of 3. So clearly, your high school teacher and I have different ideas about what the discriminant is, because these numbers are not the same. 
but there's also a big difference in how those numbers were computed. Your high school teacher only had to know a, b, and c, the coefficients, to find the discriminant. We, looks like we had to know both of the roots, so we had to solve the polynomial first, and then multiply the pairwise differences of roots together. So we have very different ideas of not only what the discriminant is, but how we can compute it. One of the surprises, though, is we'll see down the line that we can compute our discriminant even without knowing the roots of our polynomial. And that's a shock, not just for quadratics, but for polynomials of any degree.